Today, I just want to do a little bit of a follow-up on the video I did about my clutch fork kit. And I thought I'd do a little bit of information because I found a bell housing and I wanted to show you how it installs and a few bits and pieces, a few tips what to look for. Now, before I start, I'd just like to say thank you so much for everybody who went bonkers and buying my clutch arms. Oh, you know, I, I was up till half past two this morning putting things in packages and getting them all ready, so thank you very much. Now, uh, you've got your clutch out and you've stripped all your bits and pieces off. As I mentioned in my video, one of the things to look for is this. Um, see this one? This, uh, I mean this ball. If it's loose like this, it comes out, it's scrap. So this, this whole section is scrap, but I'll put it on now just to show you what it's like, because that's no good at all. That should be a press fit. And the action of a, a clutch with friction has, has caused that. So what we're going to do, we're going to show you where the lubrication points are. So you, obviously you want to put some white grease on here. I'm not going to put any on because I'll have it all over, look at this, I'll have it all over my hands in next to no time. So you want to put some grease around this uh, tube and onto the ball. You also want to put some grease on these pivot points here and here and a little bit in here. You're going to obviously first fit your clutch fork. I haven't actually got one handy so I can't do it. Not the clutch fork, the, uh, the push rod and the little clip. And then once that's all greased up, you put your what called slippers on and then you fit it. Now, whenever you fit these clutches even if it's not one of mine or somebody else's, I don't care. But just make sure that, tease these forks back a little bit. Just make sure they're not good. They're okay. They're not uh, too flat. Now, I check every one be before they go out and make sure they're um, sticking up a little bit. And it will become clear in a minute. Because if not, you'll have a hell of a time trying to fit this. So all I do is I offer it down, look down, and clip it in and that's it it's clipped in now and then get your bearing again look at me I'm all covered in dirt and then that should slip in quite nicely and you see how it works look and then if I've got one handy you can fit this little staple into the hole at the back which you can't see but believe me it's there but let me take this bearing out just to show you. At the, at the back of this arm, there is a little hole, like that, look, that's where that slips in. And that slips in to one of those gaps there, whichever one you want to do, they're all the same. So that's where that slips in. And basically, that's all it is for. It's just for transport, so if this, this is obviously vertical, if it was horizontal, when you're putting your clutch in, you need to put this little staple in because with all that messing about you could actually see now that now that will lift it up and down so that's that's all right now that's good it's all ready to go one thing you'll find because this is on a radius you might find that the um, clutch bearing in one point is a little bit tight you know not not quite free it's okay it's not a problem, but I have noticed uh, with a standard arm, uh, not, not even mine, just one out of the packet, if you were going to put a aluminium heavy duty bearing in here, uh, sometimes the tolerances of this bore in here is a little bit tight. And sometimes you'll find it, oh dear me, it's binding up, it's binding up. It's no big, it's no big deal. Uh, it'll eventually wear in, but... The, the plastic ones are just as good. Um, I, I can't understand why they use plastic... Um, not plastic. I can't understand why they use aluminium ones to make uh, the housing. The plastic ones, we've had no problems with them. These are uh, genuine NSK ones. There have been no problems at all. The only problems we do have, because the bearings are just about all the same, so that doesn't really change anything... But we problems we do have is that people who put their foot on the clutch and rest on the clutch, this bearing 
uh, instead of having just a little bit of, of uh, contact but no real pressure, if you foot, put your foot on the clutch whilst you're driving, that bearing will eventually overheat and fail. All right, so never put your foot on the clutch. It's not, it's not a foot rest. All right, so that's why the, I've known these bearings actually melt because they got so hot. And all we've done, the clutch was fine, all we've done is taken it out and put a bearing in and, a, and another arm. Well, put one of mine in naturally, and uh, it's been fine. Now, well, one of the things about this is that um, a little bit of mathematics for you if you're interested is that the, the length of the arm here to here is about one and a half to one. All right, so that's the ratio, it's about one and a half to one. Technically speaking, if you want to press your clutch in with 50 pounds, you only need 33 pounds of pressure on your cylinder. Okay, so that's the ratio. So this is this is why it's not in the middle. It's it's geared up, but the stroke is longer. If you see what I mean. So to push this down, you have to go longer than this will go up. I hope that's clear. So anyway, that's how it all should work. This is a 300 TDI. They're all the same uh, on a 2.5 uh, or a 200 TDI. This tube here is actually on the gearbox itself. And the reason why it's sort of on a perch like this is because the, the bell housing is a lot deeper on a 300 TDI. So there's a few things to check for before you put the clutch in because obviously we don't want to do this two or three times. We only want to do it once because doing it once is bad enough. Um, like I say, just check check this because you can say that's that's no good at all. This is this is this piece of scrap. Um, let me have a wander about and see if I can find that one. No, oh, here it is. Look, you see, this is the one I was looking for yesterday. You can see how the the the. Uh, the ball's just about to push through this hole. We just caught this one in time. You see? Completely dry. No lubrication in it at all. And that is all because of that friction that's on, on there. And you can see the swivel, but you can see the ball popping through there. So with a bit more pressure on there, that wouldn't take much, much pressure to come through. And so the friction, if you get rid of the friction, you'll get rid of that problem. All right, so... Uh, that's a bad design, but you can't get in to lubricate it. That's the worst part about it. I mean, if you could get in every now and again and put a bob of grease on it, well, that'd be okay. So there you go. That's a little, uh, just a little video of um, how this operation works. I use this little test rig to check all my uh, clutch forks to make sure they're all within tolerances. So everything you get is going to be checked. So I hope that's of some interest. Um, if you like that, subscribe and give us a thumbs up. And if you've got any questions, let me know. And I'll put a link to the video that I've been doing my clutches in up at the top. But you'll have lots of happy motoring with that clutch arm of mine. No real problems at all. So we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.